Okay, uh, the first question comes from Franz. What rights of refusal do I have if the car delivered does not meet expectations, i.e. condition? Do I have a right to demand a loaner until my car is repaired or replaced? Is Tesla liable for my losses if the car isn't delivered on time? Um, insurance costs, loss of pay. The blogs I've read tell you about delivery problems, and I would like to know what are my rights. You know, I, I actually don't know um, in terms of what your rights are. I have heard of people refusing delivery for one thing or another. Um, and, and often, if it is a quality thing, it's, it's on the other end where they find the quality thing. And remember, the people, the delivery team, they get the car and they're cranking them out and delivering them so quickly. They maybe have the car, you know, have it physically inspected an hour before you get there. Um, or at least that's kind of my, my guess. It doesn't seem like something that, that they, you know, they, they have enough time or resources to spend hours with every individual car. So the assumption they have, I believe, is like the car should be ready to go when it hits the delivery center. They're just facilitating you taking delivery of it, um, which is vastly different than, than when I got my first one. Um, I, I really kind of... Um, I, you know, it'd be nice if they had, you know, different models with different delivery experiences. But, uh, so, so far th that's what I know. Um, uh, you, you should be able to refuse it. I don't know where you're located, um, what country or anything like that. So I assume you're in the U S though, but yeah, as far as I know, you can refuse it, um, in terms of, uh, in they're usually good about giving you a loaner. I don't know about anything else, uh, regarding losses and that. So, sorry. Thanks for the question. Franz DJ. Um, asked, has Elon's Times interview uh, helped or harmed the Tesla brand? You know, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I really didn't didn't uh, dig into it. Um, I was far more interested in the one with Marquez uh, because I think that was much more relevant to me as an owner. Um, I, I understand that it's uh, that, that the stock went down, but again, I have very little faith in the stock market and try not to pay attention to it. So um, there you have it. Thanks for the question, DJ. Tom asks, uh, it seemed to me that Elon's texting and Wall Street's reaction to all that publicity has obscured what has been going on in both Sparks and Fremont. It was only a month or so ago that the story was that Tesla couldn't deliver quality cars. Now they appear to be shipping a bit over 6,000 threes a week. I don't know if that's true. Um, that number's maybe a little bit high. Mostly crickets on that. So is this simply people that are naturally gravitating to bad news or is it a part of the te continued shorts push to deep six Tesla? Yeah, okay, yeah, I, I, I like what, where you're going with this. It's an interesting question. Um, yeah, there's a lot of people that have uh, a lot of money at stake, um, for Tesla to fail. And every, you know, every other week or so, anytime we get concrete evidence th to the contrary, they, they, you know, it seems to be a, a spurry of, of news, news stories, which are seemingly out of nowhere that, that kind of, yeah, paint things in a negative light to try to hurt the stock. I think the whole stock market is kind of a racket anyways, and, and I, I don't I don't play that game. So it's one of those things, like, I, I guess I, I don't care that much. I really do hope they can take the company private, uh, so that way it doesn't matter, right? And the thing that does matter is them making the cars and people loving them, um, because that's truly, I think, the, the, the critical piece. And, and being public uh, definitely um, hurts their ability to, to succeed on that front, as far as I'm concerned. Thanks for the question, Tom. Leo asks, regarding the Saudis wanting to invest in Tesla, the optimist in me thinks it's good to help bring Tesla out of the shareholders' string pulling, but conspiracy theorist in me thinks it's a red herring and that they will destroy the EV industry from the inside. What are your thoughts? I don't know, man. Um, that's a hard one. Um, that's a, I don't honestly know. Like, like The way I think of this whole thing is uh, energy companies and you know folks with huge stakes in energy, which in the world today generally means oil, aren't dumb and they're going to be diversifying bp for example just bought i believe the largest charging uh network in europe uh because they know that this is coming i, I don't think like you know the shell exxon bps or you know the saudis uh with the oil will will go away i think it'll shift um, in fact, there's even some really interesting stuff happening over there. If you go check out um, Robert Llewellyn on the Fully Charged show, where there's cities that are completely uh, green and renewable energy, and then they they just ordered like a couple hundred Model Xs for a fleet of kind of town car services for the government. I mean, it, it, I don't think like you should just write off this this group because uh, uh, of their tradition or, or their their history with with oil. Um, I, I do think it's something to, to tread lightly with if I were in, you know, the Tesla boards kind of shoes, but I, I don't, I don't think it's something that, uh, like, like these folks are, are, see the writing on the wall, just like the rest of us. So 
I, I don't know that, that I would write him off entirely. So yeah, I'm, I guess I'm kind of with you. I'm a little bit skeptical, but I'm also kind of hopeful. So yeah, only time will tell. Thanks for the question, Leo. Jacob asks, uh, the Model 3 all-wheel drive non-performance and the performance version seem to have only have one difference, uh, the 0 to 60 ton um, for $11,000. I think it's only $10,000, right? In your opinion, is it worth it? Is the non-performance all-wheel drive software limited or those? No. Okay, so no. The, the performance model has uh, a larger motor and it also, uh, or larger motors, may, maybe just one larger, I don't know, but uh, uh, it definitely has, has more um, power and, and the, uh, the, the actual cabling, the the, the the actual powertrain, um, which transfers the energy to the motors, is larger as well. So I don't believe it's a software thing at all. Um, and, and it does have a, a bigger, more powerful hardware on it. So th there, that is the physical difference. Do I think it's worth it? It depends. <laughs> um, it, dep it depends what you want. You know, I don't think it's something that's necessary at all. Uh, but you know, it doesn't mean it's not not a reason to go buy it. So yeah, I, I think it's something you'll have to answer for yourself. There you go. Thanks for the question, Jacob. Les asks, I'm a big fan of Elon, but I'm worried for his mental health lately. The recent New York Times interview made it sound like he is close to cracking up due to the incessant smear campaign. I wonder if he's able to get counseling. I also think he should get off Twitter. Don't read it. Yeah, I, I feel. Um, I don't think anyone at Tesla can, can get him to do that. Uh, there was a funny comment or tweet. Somebody said uh, uh, the Tesla PR team should be fired uh, for letting him do that interview. I think that's fascinating because uh, that the the presumption there is that someone can tell Elon what to do. Uh, when you're in his position, one of the richest men in the world, one of the most powerful, there aren't you, people don't tell you what to do, <laughs> right? Uh, I think even even normal people have uh, an aversion to being told what to do once you're an adult and you kind of are you know have in, in kind of control of your own actions. So. Yeah, uh, that, that, that's hilarious to me. No, I don't think anyone can tell him uh, what to do. Maybe uh, through, you know, uh, uh, the, the mental and personal stress. Maybe, I, I assume he probably has a therapist. Or, or so. so, yeah, I don't know. Um, hopefully, I, I, and I agree, though. I agree, um, you know, we could use a little bit more uh, 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 temperament and sanity uh, w with that stuff because it's, it's not helpful. Thanks for the question slash comment less. Sean asks, hi, Ben. I am currently a Canadian university student looking forward to your upcoming data science course. Awesome. Um, I have a strong interest in being environmentally friendly, but at this point, it seems that EVs, especially Teslas, are too expensive for students to afford. Do you think it will mostly be a matter of waiting it out over the next few years for more used EVs and Tesla competitors to enter into the space um, to make them a more feasible investment for students? Yeah, uh, it's a good question. Um... I wouldn't, I wouldn't stretch yourself. I mean, my, my way of thinking, and this is why I don't, I, like I still have a 2013 uh, Model S and I'm going to keep it and I love it. It's one of those things. I, I don't think you should, you should worry about it that much. There are lots of other ways to, um, you know, uh, be more environmentally conscious than, than owning a Tesla. Uh, and there are lots of cheaper model, uh, uh, cheaper EVs out there. So if you do want an EV, I, I would look at, you know, maybe some other options. There, there are plenty that, that are, that are far more affordable than a Tesla. Granted, they're not, you know, as stylish or as feature rich or whatever. So yeah, you're going to ma make a compromise, but I mean, that's, that, oh, but, but that's kind of what it comes down to, right? So um, you know, you also could like, I don't know your situation, but you know, not have a car at all it is another option. Take public transportation. I actually did that for a year before moving to California. It was, it was quite nice. So, you know, um, yeah, if you want a Tesla, yeah, I, I would say wait until you're, uh, financially able to handle that. Cause it, it definitely isn't cheap. You're right about that. So, you know, uh, other than that, yeah, you may just have to wait a while, but, uh, you know, Hey, maybe we can get you a job in data science and, uh, and you know, you'll have more money coming in and, and it won't be an issue. So, Hey, th thanks for the support. Thanks Thanks for watching and um yeah i hope to hope to talk to you soon thanks for the question sean uh les asks hi ben when if ever do you believe tesla will start leasing a model three three years from now maybe what would that be 2021 maybe keith asks good morning ben i picked up a model three about a month ago and overall happy with the vehicle however i have i've tried to sync my calendar and was informed by tesla that the service is unavailable yeah there's yes exactly thank you because i have that same problem i okay sorry I then emailed Tesla customer service and was told that the feature might not even be offered. Yep, that is also possibly true. If Tesla is not going to offer that functionality, then why have it as part of the app? 
Uh, oh, okay, it's because it's for the Model S um, and for the Model X, that's why. Uh, but hopefully they will have an app store one day and who knows, maybe perhaps there will be a built-in calendar app not made by Tesla that works on the car. How about that? I think that's where we should go. Thanks for the question, Keith. Randall asks, Ben, I took a four hour highway drive in my Model 3 and auto steer gets confused when the lane widens at off ramps. Yep. A couple of times it shut down if uh, it shut down unexpectedly in the middle of the off ramp dotted line. What is your experience with the auto steer feature? Do you like it? No, I don't. I think it's very much still in beta. I don't think it's great, especially in California. Our roads are not great. And so it has a hard time. Um, I, I am thinking about, I have been testing it with different modes of kind of sitting and, and holding onto the wheel, et cetera. So I may actually post a video kind of what, what I recommend, but uh, unless you're going, let's say on a nice highway out on a road trip that doesn't have a lot of cars and you can just kind of be in the middle lane, I think right now it's 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 not good for much much besides that. So thanks for the question, Randall. Tom asks, I'm told that I should expect my non-performance Model 3 over the next three months. I've set up an appointment for a test drive later this week. Do you have a short list of questions and things to note, learn while I'm driving with the salesperson? I want to make good use of my time. Just enjoy it. Enjoy your driving experience. Make sure you really enjoy the feeling of it. Um, other than that, the make sure the trunk and the front match you know your needs. Uh, in terms of space, get really comfortable in there, adjust the seats, make sure it's something, um, you know, and, and then also uh, think about the not having something behind the wheel looking over that I've got completely used to that's not an issue for me, but the navigation is still an issue. So, you know, um, yeah, I would just make sure it kind of fits comfortably for you physically, because those are the things that can't really change. Uh, the software and all those things obviously will change over time. So thanks for the question, Tom, and good luck. Uh, why did uh, Tesla stock price drop? Uh, who knows? It's the market. Um, when supercharging on a hot day, 110 degrees Fahrenheit after a long drive, is it normal for charging to start up and then stop after a few minutes? No. Perhaps charging waits for the battery to cool down a bit? Oh, it could be. Um, unplugging, waiting a few seconds, and replugging and started charging process again. Charging continue to the completion. Uh, it could be either. So, so, the, uh, it's probably not. And so when you say charger, I assume you mean the supercharger, uh, that is basically just uh, a direct plug into the DC outlet. Uh, the charger, uh, that actually, um, that actually absorbs that energy is, is built into the car. So it could be, um, an issue with, with the car. I would call your service center, um, and, and make sure that, that, that that's what's going on because, uh, it, I, I, it could be the charger, the actual supercharger station itself, but that I believe just has fewer parts and things that could go wrong. So that's my guess. Call your service center. Peter asks, uh, model three Montreal, Montreal waiting for rear quarter panel since June 11th, ETA keeps get, uh, changing, but September 6th now latest. Yeah, no, I'm the same way. Um, same way. Uh, I'm taking m my model three in for uh, tomorrow for work. Uh, thankfully that all that's needed, they're going to try to actually repair it instead of having to order a part. Thank God, because even here in California and San Diego, the, there is a, an indefinite wait time currently, meaning like we don't know if and whenever we'll get parts for certain things. Definitely an issue. Um, something that I think they, they, they need to work on. Thanks for the question. Donald asks, I've looked at different adapters for charging my model three. They're all combination 1450 R with various different plugs that range from 115, 15 amp to 240, 40 amp dryer plugs, generator plugs. Does, does the model three charger have the ability to sense voltage and current available when it tells a 14 fit? Yeah, it should. Um, the inside there, there's a way to adjust it. And so, uh, as long as you can connect, I think you're okay. But then inside of the car, it, it has a way to adjust, uh, w what it's pulling. Um, that's been my experience personally. If you have more questions, maybe contact Tesla. I, I don't know the technical side behind that, but that's been my experience. Hope that helps you, Donald. Um, Carlo asks, hi, Ben, quick question. When I plug in my Model 3, I usually wake up about, wake up to about 353 kilometers charge. However, recently has dropped to 349. Any clue what is might be happening? You know, it varies. I, I get that as well. Um, some days it charges to 90% and that's 280 miles for me. Um, some days it does it 275 and then the next day it'll be back at 280. It's really, it's really kind of temperamental right now. I wouldn't worry about it though. Um, unless it just continues to drop, which, which would be, which would be odd. Um, yeah. So just hang in there and you'll see it go up and down. I, I wouldn't be worried about it. Thanks, Carla. Phil asks, um, hi, Ben. I noticed the kilowatt hours used for my wall charger does not equal the amount used in my model three when charging is complete. It uses more. Why? 
Uh, the Killwater, uh, maybe because it has to power additional things, there's Phantom Drain, some of the other stuff. Um, yeah, and then you can see someone commented there, charging inefficiencies, yeah, so lots of different stuff happening there um, when it comes to that. I'm curious how you're measuring that. That's kind of cool because I've been wanting to do that for a while. Thanks for the question, Phil. I tried charging my 2017 S100 using Gen 1. It kept giving me a red light. Okay, we already talked about this, so I'm going to skip that one. Ken asks, um, do you know of anyone who has verified P3D has track worthy brakes? You've probably seen my video of my regular, uh, I haven't, and how the standard brakes don't last more than a few laps. Yeah, I, I haven't, um, ha haven't seen it yet, um, but I'm curious uh, when, it, when it does come out. Thanks for the question, Ken.